everyone. Today we're going to talk about the different screens you have available with Mach 4. I'm going to show you how to change out screens and go over some differences between them so you know which ones you should use. We're going to start off with the WX4 screen, which is shown here. This is your default mill screen. It's intended for use with a 4-axis mill and it should look pretty familiar. You have your DROs here, your toolpath here, and your G-code field here. It's a pretty standard setup and it's what I'm going to be comparing the rest of the screens to throughout this video. Now to change your screen, you're going to navigate up here, click View, Load Screen, and it's going to show you a list of screens that are saved in the Screen subfolder of your Mach 4 hobby directory. Most of these screens are ones that you should see in your list when you open it. There's one that you might not, and I'm going to go over that one later. So next we're going to look at the WX6 set. So we select it, hit Open, and it's going to load on our screen here. This is the 6-axis mill screen, and not much is going to change from the WX4. What has changed is the B and C axes are now shown in the DRO field. So you'd pick this screen over the default WX4 screen if you're using more than four axes. As you can see here, you've got X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. Nothing else has really changed on this screen. So if you are only using four axes, you can stick with that one or use this one. It doesn't make a difference. The next screen I'm going to go over with you is the engrave screen. Before we move on to that one, I want to give you a little bit of background on the engrave screen. If you've had a chance to play with the wizards, you may have seen the font engrave wizards. The font engrave wizard pulls up a window that allows you to engrave um, simple text and numbers. It generates the, the G code and just pops it right in there for you. No need to pull up another program. It's just there. In and of itself, that's a fairly easy process, but the engrave screen takes it one step further. So let's pull that one up and take a look. So what you're going to see once the screen loads is that it adds another tab next to the toolpath. So your toolpath is here, and then you'll see this new font engrave tab has been added. When we click it, you can see that that wizard window that appeared before is now built right into the screen in the form of a tab. If you find yourself engraving text and numbers often, this screen can make your process smoother. Now I'm going to jump around a bit and show you the lathe screen next. This one looks quite a bit different from what we've seen so far. The toolpath is much longer and it's been moved to the middle of your screen and the DROs only show the X and Z axes. Just below that, there's a spot for you to input values and calculations related to your spindle. Now, as you might have guessed by the title, this screen is meant for use with a lathe. All of these changes that you've seen are geared towards making life easier for our lathe users. There's even a tab over here that shows you your turn cycles. The next screen I want to show you is the router screen. The router screen is very similar to the 4-axis mill screen, but there are some key changes that make it suited to use with a router. First, there's the fractional tab that's been added over here. This gives you another way to track your position aside from the standard DROs. So if we jog our y-axis, you'll see that it updates in a fraction. So it shows that our position for the y-axis on the fractional tab is at 11 sixteenths. If we go to current positions, it shows it as being 0.7117. Just another way to keep track of where you're moving. There's also a new field below the DROs that allows you to adjust your offsets. Next, we have the WX Mock screen. This screen is a lot like the WX4 screen in that it shows you the four axes in your DROs and it has a lot of the same buttons and displays. One of the big differences you'll notice is the parts information shown here. If you're cutting multiple parts, this will keep track of how many you'd finished. Now, down here where you'd normally see the name of the screen that you're using, the Mock screen shows you your feed rate. Another cool thing about this screen is that it has a separate tab for your MDI with its own toolpath display. Now this screen is simpled and uncluttered and it offers a different way of doing things, but it is missing two things that the WX4 screen has. It doesn't have an option for probing where you'd normally see the touch module and it doesn't have an option for your tool and work offsets. Now that's because this screen doesn't have the same dependencies that the WX4 screen set has. Without getting too complicated, it just means it doesn't have the ability to pull from your subfolders the same way. Now the next screen is the WX Minimal screen. This is going to look exactly the same as the mock screen that we just saw on the surface. 
Behind the scenes is where these two screens differ. Minimal has limited scripting for each of his buttons, which means if you click a button in Minimal, there's less going on behind the scenes than there would be in the mock screen. Now, if that's something that you need, Minimal is definitely the choice for you. Now, the blank screen is a bit of an oddball. When we go to load the blank screen, it looks like we've got an error, but we didn't. This screen, as the title says, is blank. If you're looking for a literal blank slate to edit and play with, this is the screen for you. Other than that, it is not functional as is, and most users won't ever need to use this screen. Another screen that you're probably never going to use is the Orthmill screen. Now, this screen was designed specifically for a customer to fit their needs, and it's a good example of how you can customize all of the buttons and edit your screen to fit your needs, which we will cover in another video. Next, I want to give you a preview of a screen that you might not see in your Mach 4 folder. But first, I need to mention one other weird thing about the Orthmill screen. Now, if you look at the Orthmill screen, just to check it out, and you go to switch back to another screen set, what you're going to see is a password window appear. Now, that password window, you can completely 100% ignore. See, password window. All you do is just close out of it doesn't make a difference, doesn't affect your performance or anything like that. It's just one of the remnants from the Orthmill screen. Now this screen here is called the MW Panel Set. This is part of the ModuleWorks Cutting Simulator. If you've purchased the Cutting Simulator, you'll have a profile that uses this screen. What this screen does is add a tab to the basic four-axis screen called Simulator, which you'll see here. If I were using my ModuleWorks profile, I could use this tab to watch a simulation of my part being cut in a 3D rendering. For more information on that, check out our website, mocksupport.com. Now that we've explored each of the screens that come with Mach 4, I hope you have an idea of which screen would work best for you. To recap, WX4 is for 4-axis mills, WX6 is for 6-axis mills. Engrave allows you to use the font engrave wizard in a tab rather than a specific window. The lathe and router screens are meant for use with a lathe and router, respectively. WX Mock can be used with 4-axis mills, and it includes a part tracker, MDI tab, and it has a very uncluttered appearance, but it also has limited dependencies. WX Minimal looks just like WX Mock, but with limited and simplified scripting. The blank screen is a blank screen with no buttons or displays, and Orth Mill is a custom screen created for a customer. Last, we have the panel screen. That's a screen that you'll only ever use if you have the ModuleWorks Cutting Simulator, which I definitely recommend checking out. Now keep an eye out for a new video about editing screens in Mach 4. And one piece of advice until then, if you want to edit or play around with one of the screens in the meantime, make sure you make a copy of it and leave the original untouched. This will save you the hassle of trying to undo changes if you've made a mistake. Until then, happy CNCing!